everyone, I want to talk all about perfectionism and how perfectionism is unfortunately plaguing our society, getting worse in many different ways because of the advancements of technology, easy access to information, uh, the research advancements we're seeing. And I'm going to talk about this teeter concept, this basically seesaw that I'm seeing happening in society from my perspectives of stoicism, my perspectives of REBT that I've applied to my life, and just unconditional self-life, other acceptance that I think many people would benefit from applying. Before I go any further, please subscribe, hit that like button, comment down below. Let me know about some of the perfectionist and thing, perfectionistic things you see on YouTube and social media. That might, um, <laughs> that might, you're like, hey, look, this is definitely going in the wrong way, more than likely, and we can break some of those down. And if you're interested in our coaching and webinar services, please email us at info at ocdrecovery.com and we'll get back to you in a timely fashion. Now, humans are currently on a seesaw. Now, I can only imagine how this is gonna end. Um, I don't think it's gonna end well hundreds and thousands of years from now. But for the majority of human existence, we were like this. So up here was an intuition, not a lot of super strict schedules and routines because we didn't have a lot of information. And people just did things more intuitively. As we gained more research and perspective, which is great, advancements in human technology, um, uh, advancements in knowledge and research and meta-analysis and systematic reviews, as we have teetered, we have gone the other way. And if you look back here, this, let's go 70 years ago, smoking in airports, all the different things, right? Uh, you go back 100 years ago, there was cocaine and Coca-Cola, all sorts of different things. Well, now we're here where everyone believes they need a uh, super strict, rigid structure, crazy routines. And I don't even mean about just OCD and anxiety recovery. I mean about the stuff where, you know, you're seeing people with these things on their nose for breathing. You're seeing people with these super strict lifestyle structures where almost nothing is intuition anymore. It's just like, all right, I have to eat at this particular times. I have to be this in tune with my workout. I have to be this great. And look, I'm a very structured, routine-based person. I mean, I've shown you guys my whiteboards. I have both my whiteboards with all my obligations. I keep, this is just my daily calendar. I keep everything right here. I have a, um, a, a business one. I have OCD content, personal stuff I have to get done, my networking organization. And, and I do this every day. So I'm, I'm a very structured routine-based person, but things go wrong much more than they go right. Now, look, this is a topic that no one really enjoys talking about because we get very defensive when people bring us questions. And, and, and Ray Dalio, who's one of my favorite people to read, famous hedge fund manager and investor that Rob and I really like, he talks about if you can't have your beliefs stress-tested, there's probably a problem. Now, I will speak about unconditional self-life, other acceptance, and why I think it's the better option and why people get it wrong. You know, you hear stuff such as, oh, why would I ever want to accept myself? That means I'm adequate and, and, and I'm mediocre. I was at a climbing gym two weeks ago and a guy had a shirt on that said, uh, we do not approve um, mediocreness or something like that. Or me something like that. Or mediocre is weakness ridiculous type stuff. That just breeds fear of fear and fear of failure. Now, I am probably more driven than most because of probably just what I've been through in my life and what I want to accomplish, but that's not perpetuated or attached to my identity at all. Now, there are many different topics inside of the perfectionistic world that we could talk about, but I kind of want to hone this one on, on the health stuff. So you have nutrition, exercise, sleep routines, and general health. So nutrition has completely gotten out of control, totally. Counting macros to a T, weighing things, not going out. These are breeding grounds for biodysmorphia. And I know this very, very well. I counted my macros on paper. I didn't even use my fitness pal. I literally tracked it on paper for 10 years. And over time, because when you do that, it develops a very, very black and white belief system about nutrition, it really hinders you because you label foods as good and bad. Now look, if you have a goal and you wanna be a competitive bodybuilder, sure, you're gonna to have to make some sacrifices. But I think you should be very aware about things can go wrong and you don't have the control that you think you do. Everyone's body responds differently. You might be looking really lean and you have a stressful event that day and you hold on to some water. No, 
know. And then you're like, well, I'm not going to be stressed anymore. That's ridiculous. Now let's go into exercise. The, the most amount anyone needs to really do, in my opinion, is no programming whatsoever. These programming apps are a nightmare for people. They, they, in what I see, I always tell people, if programming and nutrition at the level that we use it in the fitness industry, and um, trust me, I'm someone that was deep in the fitness industry, tracking the macros, severe programming. And yes, some people can balance it, but most people probably don't need it. Or better off going in intuition. Use anabolic steroids for years. And what happens is it becomes your entire life. Now, if you want to make that your entire life, there's nothing wrong with that. Do you and do whatever you want to do. But more than likely, it's not good. People don't want to travel. They don't want to try new foods. And then they say, well, that's not me. I'm, it's the ultimate sacrifice. Bodybuilding is not a sacrifice. It's a disorder. I, I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth. Bodybuilding is not a sacrifice. It's, it's not a sacrifice in the way that's, I'm sorry. I, I, I had to say it. I wanted to say it. And I don't mean it's a disorder in the way where you're going to be like, what do you mean it's a disorder? The, the, the bodybuilding world is filled with body dysmorphia. Filled. If they're the happiest people on earth, when me and my wife were at a really famous bodybuilding gym here in Colorado, why is everyone so miserable? Why is everyone not smiling? Why is everyone judging you? because the irrational beliefs are super, super strong. And again, I didn't mean it was a disorder in the fact of, oh, you know, they all have disorders. No, but uh, there's a lot of body dysmorphia and there's a lot of eating problems and there's a lot of irrational beliefs. It's not a balanced society. Now I bodybuild and I love bodybuilding. Train five days a week, do cardio almost every single day. I lift a lot of weights to failure and I train hard and I squat and I deadlift and I bench. And I do all the big compound movements and I hike. But I don't watch what I eat. I have a lot of fun when I eat. Yeah, I balance it, but I love Girl Scout cookies. I just bought four boxes of the bar the other day. At a bar, drinking after hiking, buying Girl Scout cookies. And I'm in great shape. I'm in as, as great shape as I want to be in. And I want to progress and I want more from that, but I don't need any more from that. I cannot tell you how freeing it is to be to a place like that. It took me a very long time to realize that. Now, the sleep stuff is totally out of control. It's totally... Beth, the holistic sleep coach, periods in between her name, a uh, person that we work with. If you don't follow her on Instagram, she's great. We talk about, <laughs> we talk about, <laughs> the sleep industry has built a multi-billion dollar industry on <laughs> convincing you that not sleeping is bad. I have fallen into this trap many times. What if I don't get enough sleep? What if I make a mistake? What if I'm too tired? What if I can't handle it? My life is going to be over. You got all sorts of sleep rituals, sleep routines. And what about dopamine? What about, you know, BDNF, brain-derived nootropic factor? You're not... Yes, awesome stuff. No one needs to understand that. You're going to die one day, okay? I like going out and having fun. I, Rob and I always say, if, if you got the big people on social media, we all know who they are on the Rogan podcast, who talk about, you know, don't eat these foods. It's all about this perfection. If they saw the, the way I live, they would say, you check your phone right when you wake up in the morning? That's terrible. You need 30 minutes. You don't meditate. That. It's too controlling. It's way, 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 way too controlling. This is the hard truth that no one wants to hear. I can't tell you how deep I was in this cycle. I was so deep in the perfect. I have no health routines like that. Not rigid. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is your overall health, okay? You gotta remember, I'll give you an example. My dentist kept saying to me, okay, I'll show my teeth, okay? Okay, okay, there's my teeth right there. So right here, whatever this is called, the frenulum, they were like, oh, you know that you really have to get that looked at. You're gonna have to get that snip that's receding. I was like, sure, I'll, I'll do it sometime. Didn't do it six months, I went later. She's like, you're, you're gonna, something's real bad's gonna happen. No, I don't, I don't think it's that serious. I'm not gonna pay the money to do that. But there's no point. You gotta remember healthcare providers, and I am a healthcare provider, are trained and designed in reassurance, perfection, solving problems at all costs, and not wanting to fail. Now, we need all sorts of providers. We need physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists, personal trainers, medical doctors, surgeons, and all the different range of nurses, everyone, every tech, we all come together for the benefit of helping people. But we, a lot of us have been bred to think that we need things to be a certain way in order for us to be happy and accept ourselves. So I know this is gonna be a great video for people to watch. There's probably gonna be a lot of disagreements, especially about the, body, the bodybuilding one. 
Now I'm telling you that, and some of that, again, that thoroughly loves to bodybuild, but we've gone way too far. Go to the gym, pick something, stick with it for a while. You don't need to track your reps. You don't have to track your sets. You don't have to track your time frames. You don't have to be crazy about it. You wanna lift five, six reps one time, cool. You wanna lift 10 to 20 reps next time, cool. Challenge your body, stress your muscles and grow. Eat how you want, you know, and stuff like that. I enjoy eating three times a day with some snacks in between. I used to eat five, six times a day because I was all very bro as they call it, which none of that really matters. And I got lost. Super deep. Sleep one, I was super deep in the sleep one too. Like, I remember if it got to eight o'clock at night, I would just get so anxious because I would think, oh my God, I have to be home for this. I have to be home. And it became a problem. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, please comment down below. I just wanted to turn the camera on and go with this. You want me to read? I, I just made a post on, on our Facebook. I'll read this to you actually. Um, when I do my Wednesdays and Sundays videos, I like to connect them to my Facebook posts that I do in our Facebook group. If you're not a member of our Facebook group, it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, let me jump on that one real quick. Mm -mm -mm. I gotta find it first. Here we go. Okay. Wednesday Insights, the world of perfectionism. This is a topic I thoroughly enjoy speaking about because I believe, and what we see, are the effects of trying to perfect our health, recovery, relationship, and jobs are much more problematic than not. What do you see on TikTok, Reels, IG posts, and YouTube? Five foods to avoid if you want to live forever. How to stop stress forever. The perfect sleep routine. The perfect exercise and diet routine. This one technique will build muscle faster. Five ways to know that they're the one. How to breathe through your nose. I said, this shit kills me with these straps that everyone's putting on their nose. Insanity. It's insane. You do not need any of that. Just live your life without these perfections. I know a lot of people are not going to like that. I have to be quite frank. Society has lost their mar marbles. Yes, research and advancements of the human race are key. But at what costs? These are the costs I'm seeing. People are either afraid to absolutely take no risk or they're taking so much risk because they've been convinced by an influencer that go big or go home. The sleep and health perfection usually creates much more fear of fear and usually outweighs the potential benefits. People in relationship jumping because we have been convinced there's the one out there for everyone and we should never settle for someone who doesn't respect us or match our love language or all this other stuff that we do to convince people that you must respect me. Trying to perfect OCD recovery like a math problem and people are afraid of doing things intuitively because they are convinced they need a plan, a strict regimen, and for everything, I need the answer now. Something to think about. Again, if you're not in our WhatsApp, um, our Facebook group, OCD Recovery Group, great place. And if you're interested in our coaching and webinar services, please email us at info at OCDrecovery.com, and we'll get back to you in timely fashion. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day.